Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over uh, the inflate effect within Adobe Illustrator, which is a great way to introduce ourselves to the suite of 3D tools that uh, Adobe Illustrator has implemented within it. So today is just gonna scratch kind of the surface of what we can do with Adobe's uh, 3D tools. Like I said, there's a whole suite and uh, maybe we'll explore more of those in future videos. But first thing that we're gonna do here is uh, open a new file within Illustrator. So we'll click new file. And uh, today we'll do kind of a poster look. So we'll click this 1000 by 2000, which will give us a vertical document. Then what we'll do is hit the M key or come over here to our rectangle tool and draw ourselves a background. We'll go over the full artboard. What we'll do from there is we'll delete our stroke with the slash key under the question mark, which will remove the stroke. And we'll adjust our fill to something like, surprise, uh, a warm yellow. We'll hit OK over there. Now that we have our background drawn, what we're going to do is select that background and hit Command 2, which will lock it in place, meaning that we can't bump it uh, later when we're adjusting our design. So from here, what we'll do is uh, type our letter that we would like to inflate. Or you can really use this with a shape, uh, anything. But today, we're just going to be doing a letter. I'm gonna do a lowercase a, and we will switch this font over here to, again, surprise, surprise, let's do a Haas Grotesque, and we'll do that in black, so we get a nice, thick, chunky letter here. We have our text created. Uh, we'll just blow it up here on the artboard. All right, something like that. And then we're also gonna to wanna to change the color of this text. Uh, why don't, for today's video, we'll do warmish, reddish, orangish, something like that, that'll work. Okay, now that we have that created, uh, we will jump into the 3D effects. So what we can do is make sure our text is selected. We'll go up here to effect, and then down to 3Ds and materials. Uh, from here, we will click inflate, which will give us our initial look. Um, from here, there's a ton of stuff that we can do with an illustrator. Um, by playing with the object, materials, and lighting. Um, I want to first start off by saying that this is kind of like a pre-rendered look. So uh, if you look, it's not the best, but uh, once we actually render this out, it'll become more high resolution and I guess realistic. They just leave it at this pre-rendered state so that um, it doesn't completely slow down your computer. Yeah, so like I said, there's a lot of tools you can play with here. If you want to do some rotations, you can uh, rotate it down here. You can also adjust these variables to get your own custom rotation. Um, but for today's video, just for the sake of today, I'm just going to leave this as top or um, sorry, front, which will give us this front look. Then we'll jump over here to materials. You can uh, bring stuff in from Adobe Substance. Um, you can also create your own materials. But for today, we're just going to use the, the standard default just because we're kind of touching the surface of everything here. Um, we can play with the roughness. The lower we go, the more reflective this object becomes. And the higher we go, the more matte or less reflective it becomes. We can also play with the metallic level. Um, basically, the, the more metallic, the more it starts to look like metal. Um, so we're just going to leave that at zero for today. Uh, then let's jump over to lighting. Lighting is, to me, one of the most fun parts about 3D. Um, there's a few presets you can do here, uh, top left, diffuse, right, but for today, I think what we're going to do is just click top left um, as a preset. You can also manually move it around here or click this little scope thing here and free rotate the light. Um, but like I said, I'm just going to do a standard top left for today just for the sake of efficiency with this tutorial. You can increase the intensity of the light, but we're just going to leave that as is today. Um, we're going to leave ambient light checked on. If you turn that off, basically it won't reflect any light off of your background, but we want to soften those shadows a little bit, so we'll leave it on. Um, and since we made our object so metallic, we're going to boost the softness pretty high, which will give us uh, softer highlights rather than super intense ones. And since we made our object more reflective, we're going to boost the softness decently so that uh, the highlights aren't super harsh, um, and we'll get some nice soft highlights there. Um, but yeah, that's you know, basically it for what we'll do in terms of adjusting settings. Obviously, um, feel free to play with these settings a little bit more in what you're doing, but um, for now, let's just jump over to our render. Um, so this will give us an initial render view, which will take a second. 
Uh, we can also adjust the render settings over here. So once you uh, find something that you're happy with, I would make sure you have your ray tracing turned on. We'll go to a high quality, uh, reduce noise, and um, click render here, which will give us our higher quality render. I probably would play with these settings a little bit more to get something uh, that I'm happier with. But like I said, for this video, this is kind of an introduction. Um, we'll, we'll just render this as it is. So we'll get something higher quality out of it. Um, this is gonna take your computer a second. Hopefully the result will be worth it. Awesome, so now that that's rendered out, uh, I'm not loving this background. So what I'm gonna do is command option two. We're gonna delete this background uh, and then draw a new one over top of it. So we will fill our artboard like that. We will send it to the back with command shift left bracket. Close our 3D panel. Click on our background. And I think we should do something a little darker, maybe a little more dramatic like that. Okay, and then why don't we try, why don't we actually try a gradient? Let's do a radial gradient from the center. We'll change this point to black, something like that. Okay, awesome. Uh, and then that kind of gives us uh, a nicer background. Wasn't in love with the first one. I think this is gonna work better. And then finally what we'll do just to kind of finish this off like I do in most of my designs is draw another circle over top of this or another rectangle over top of this guy with the M key or you can um, hit the, the tool at the left on the toolbar. Um, make sure that's the same size as the artboard. Then we will make this a solid fill. We will do 80, 80, 80, which will give us a mid-tone gray. We have that selected, we can come up to effect. We will go to artistic and then film grain. You can use any of these effects if you'd like. I'm just gonna use film grain for the sake of today's video. Um, I'm happy with this 13 grain, three intensity, but uh, depending on the size of your artboard uh, or what you're making, you might wanna change these. Um, but yeah, we'll just apply that for now. I'll take your computer a second to render this out. Finally, what we'll do is change the blend mode from normal to overlay, which will allow us to see what's in the background. Again, this is gonna take your computer a second. Um, but in the end, when we zoom in, we can see that we get kind of this nice stippled texture all around our poster or whatever we're designing. Um, probably would play with that a little bit more, but for the sake of today's video, I think that's fine. Yeah, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, if you found it to be helpful, it'd be awesome if you would leave a like. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like it, and particularly these 3D suite uh, videos, it'd be awesome if you'd subscribe to the channel. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Later.